With the Tokyo Olympics just 54 days away, Prime Minister Suga and the Japanese government have decided to extend the national state of emergency for the 10 prefectures until June 20th. Okinawa has suddenly become in the crosshairs of the coronavirus. It is a prefecture in crisis with the record highest number of 335 new cases yesterday. This is the latest Japan COVID update from Japan Coronavirus 2021. We have to get through a lot today, so let's get to it. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, the man in Japan. It's late May here in Kyoto. The weather is beautiful, a balmy 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rice planting continues. Okinawa's population is only about 1.5 million, but in the last week, their numbers of new coronavirus cases have risen to the level of 110 new coronavirus cases per 100,000 people. That is the highest number of affected people per 100,000 ever recorded in Japan. During Golden Week, many Japanese flew to Okinawa for the long holiday, even though much of Japan was still in a state of emergency, and people were told to stay home. Moreover, Okinawa was slow to make any state of emergency requests as Governor Tamaki felt that the businesses in Okinawa had not yet agreed to such an action. Thus, for these two reasons, Okinawa is now in a COVID crisis. The state of emergency requires businesses like bars, karaoke establishments, and izakayas to close, or if they open during the day, they cannot serve alcohol and have to close by 8 p.m. One year has passed since the start of the pandemic, and now many of these drinking establishments are very upset and complain that they can no longer remain closed or stop serving alcohol, which for most drinking establishments brings in the most revenue. The COVID pandemic and state of emergencies have forced over 1,400 companies to go out of business in Japan. Like in so many other countries, the hospitality and tourism industry has been the hardest hit with about 250 companies going out of business so far. The government does offer some subsidies to such businesses. However, many of these business owners have complained that the subsidies do not cover their basic fixed costs, they cannot stay afloat for much longer, and many have not received their subsidies from the government yet. If you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you want to hear more about what's going on in Japan, please subscribe. I think most people can understand the frustration of these businesses and at the same time the emergency crisis that the Japanese government is dealing with. Businesses in Japan have diligently, obediently followed the government's requests, the restrictions, the measures for the past year, but they are now approaching that point of no return. Many of the hard-hit businesses feel that the Japanese government has not done enough to stop the spread of the coronavirus, as well as the Japanese government has been extremely slow with the vaccine rollout. Prime Minister Suga, along with the prefectural governors and local government officials, have continued to repeat the same message as last year. Over and over, they have asked, we are sincerely sorry for the inconvenience and the trouble, but they are asking for all businesses for their continued cooperation. And now again, for the second year, the drinking, restaurant, karaoke businesses are being asked to shoulder the burden and keep their businesses closed or open for only a minimal amount of time. Many business owners feel that there has been no real progress or permanent solution and the cycle of sincere apologies continue. And so one year later, these businesses are feeling that the Japanese government has made no progress and they, the businesses, are much worse off financially than they have ever been, as well as the vaccination scenario looks grim where the general public will probably not be completely vaccinated until next year, 2022. Last Monday was the start of the national government vaccine rollout by the self-defense forces in Tokyo and Osaka. The first day went smoothly, 7,500 people were vaccinated, but from the second day there were some problems. The self-defense force computer system, which books for the second shot, went down for about two hours, and that caused a huge traffic jam at the vaccination site as people could not leave the facility until they booked their second shot, and others are coming in for the first shot. So there were a lot of people stuck in the vaccination waiting rooms, which of course goes against the most important measure of social distancing. It was eventually fixed, but the reason for the system failure is still unknown. The goal is to have up to 15,000 people a day vaccinated in the two national vaccination sites in Tokyo and Osaka. As I mentioned in my last video, the Japanese national government vaccine rollout and the prefectural vaccine rollout are run on two separate systems, so it's very confusing, especially for senior citizens. There are two different vaccination systems. There are three approved vaccines, soon to be four. There are two shots given and three weeks apart, there are two different reservation systems. Look at what the NHK News announcer was trying to explain to Kansai viewers. The chart shows the same day schedules of the national and prefectural systems. 
but the details of what age can sign up and what locations qualify were very different. It would be confusing for anyone. Presently, there is no way to catch a double booking in either of the two systems. This could potentially waste vaccine dosages if people had double booked and forgot to cancel the other vaccine reservation. On the first day of the national rollout last Monday, they found that 21% of the people who received the national vaccine injection had double booked with their own Ward City office also and had not canceled the vaccine booking yet. I think that people want to be sure that they will get vaccinated, kind of an insurance. Some people may double book with the intention that once they have their first vaccination done, they would then cancel the other one. However, there is always the possibility that if some seniors double book, some may forget to cancel or it may be too troublesome to go through the steps that is required to cancel. And in these cases, the dosages would be wasted. I think this is human nature and part of our DNA, one of survival that you try and get as much insurance as you can to be sure that you are not left out and can survive. I think the hoarding of supplies like toilet paper during the start of the pandemic was triggered by the same type of panic button within our brains. Thus, I think the present Japanese government's way of just nicely asking senior citizens to please not make two bookings and if you have to please cancel the second booking is not enough. They need to have the two systems be connected to the main system. In the last video, I talked about the recent main challenge for Japan, having the vaccine supply but not having enough doctors and trained qualified nurses to administer the vaccines. The reason is in Japan, they have an unusual law that stipulates that only a medical doctor or a qualified trained nurse can administer vaccine injections. The Japanese government just recently approved dentists to join this list. My last video suggestion was why doesn't the Japanese government allow pharmacists and medical technicians to be part of the team to vaccinate? Just this past week, Cabinet Chief Secretary Kato said that they will make some changes on who can administer vaccines and the government is considering letting paramedics and medical technicians also administer vaccines. In addition, he said they would ask pharmacists and radiologists to conduct vaccination inquiries before the injection and monitor people's condition afterwards. This again, like the doctor-only law, makes very little sense to me. The majority of paramedics are firefighters. You cannot pull them off their jobs to administer injections all day. Medical technicians may make more sense, but the news made a point that they were going to use medical technicians who are presently working at medical institutions, which I would again ask the same question. How are you going to pull them off of their jobs and dispatch them to outlying locations to administer injections? And why is the Japanese government wasting the time and skills of pharmacists and radiologists to simply ask basic health condition questions to patients before the injection and monitor Monitor and watch the patients after the injection. Anyone who is responsible can do that. A city hall person could probably easily do that. It does not have to be a pharmacist or radiologist. My reasoning for using the pharmacist is that if you let them administer the vaccine injections from their pharmacies, you already have a network and system nationwide where people could easily and quickly get their vaccinations. There is a pharmacy in every single city, town, and usually village in Japan. The primary challenge would be giving the pharmacist the training to administer the injections. But thanks to many of you who answered my questions and comments in the video last time about who administers vaccine shots in your country, I learned that there are short classes and training sessions that, that people can qualify to be a vaccinator. So Japan could do the same. My suggestion would be, why doesn't Japan set up large comprehensive training sessions for pharmacists and medical technicians and have them administer the vaccines from their pharmacies and their medical institutions? The distribution of the vaccines might be a bit of a challenge, but Japan's Takyu Bing delivery service is the very best in the world. No country can compare to the Japanese domestic Takyu Bing system. Takyu Bing delivery companies deliver the things next day, on time, for a reasonable fee, and handled with true care. In my eyes, the distribution and vaccine administer systems are already in place. All you need to do is set up the training and distribution. Am I making sense? Many doctors have also said that the national and prefectural governments need to set up a specialist system where everyone is assigned to do the job they are experts in. The typical Japanese style of working is that generally everyone kind of does everything. I mean, that's a slight exaggeration, but it's built on a system of everyone helping and working together, and there is not an exact job description like in the United States. For example, nurses may be asking the pre-vaccine questions or filling in syringes or giving the shots. What many doctors are saying to the national government is to please set up a 
national model of an effective specialist system that can be used throughout Japan. For example, pharmacists could fill in the syringes, nurses and doctors could give the vaccinations, other medical staff would do other medical procedures, general staff could do the pre-questioning and after observations. This could increase the efficiency by three or four times. Some hospitals in Japan have been successful in this type of working system, but the majority of places are still running on the generalist model where everyone does everything. I think it makes perfect sense, but due to the cultural norms of having more of an open working job description where you do pretty much everything and anything, this has also been an obstacle to setting up an efficient and effective vaccine system. When you start to compare the number of Japanese vaccinated from last week, vaccinations in Japan are actually starting to increase quite steadily. This week there were about 10% of senior citizens who received their first shot but only 0.7% who are fully vaccinated since April 12th. In regards to frontline medical workers, we see a larger increase with 91% getting their first shot and 59% getting their second shot. But remember, medical workers started getting their vaccinations on February 17th, three and a half months ago. So their overall progress is actually quite slow. Other recent news. 300 Japanese universities have agreed to open up their campuses to be used as vaccination sites from July. International flying pilots and flight crew will also be prioritized to be vaccinated to keep the coronavirus from spreading through them to the general public. Taiwan suspects that their recent coronavirus outbreak originates from flight crew who flew internationally and brought the coronavirus back to Taiwan. This week, the U.S. Center for Disease Control, CDC, issued a travel advisory to avoid all travel to Japan, which may have some negative consequences for the Tokyo Olympics, which is scheduled to be held in 54 days. The U.S. raised Japan's travel level to level 4, which is the highest level. Their message was, do not travel to Japan. How this will affect the U.S. athletes is still unknown, but the U.S. Olympic Committee said that the decision does not affect the U.S. athlete situation. Japan and the Japanese government have to walk a very, very thin, tight rope. 60% of Japanese want the Olympics to be canceled due to the coronavirus and the slow vaccine rollout. The Japanese government is in a no-win situation. They're damned if they do and damned if they don't. If they do hold the Olympics, they take the risk of a coronavirus breakout and other potential problems. When and if something happens, the naysayers will all chime in and say, we told you so. But if the Japanese government cancels the Olympics, it would be devastating for the athletes who have trained for the last five years and have already been disappointed once. And if canceled, they would have to wait a total of eight years for their next chance, where older Olympians may not be able to compete. And for Japan, they already have a huge, huge infrastructure and facilities investment, which would end up being a complete loss. And the naysayers will still say, they told you so. So the Japanese government is stuck in a no possible win, lose-lose situation. At the posting of this video, the Japanese government plans to go ahead with the Olympics with very strict measures. Testing required prior to departure, upon arrival, and while in Japan. Athletes will not be allowed to leave the dormitory and residence areas. And then, after the Olympics, they'll be quickly sent home. There won't be any sightseeing, no leaving the athletes' complex just fly into Japan, they'll compete, and then they'll leave. No foreign spectators, just some foreign journalists, the coaches, staff, and athletes. There may be some Japanese spectators allowed to watch, but last night, the Olympic Committee organizing president, hachimoto Sang said that that would not be decided until after June 20th, after the state of emergency measures were lifted. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want the latest updates on what's going on in Japan. Catch you on the backside.